Hi everyone, my name is John Hefner and today we're on site in Canton, Ohio and right behind me is the Canton Memorial Civic Auditorium. The auditorium was built in 1951 and has seen a slew of entertainers over the years. From presidents of the United States to Bob Dylan to the Harlem Globetrotters, this place has seen everyone. Well, almost everyone. There was an entertainer that was due to do a show here on New Year's Day in 1953. However, they did not make the show. That entertainer was none other than Hank Williams Sr. See, Hank had gotten kicked out of the Grand Ole Opry and in order to get back into good graces with the Opry, decided to go on tour. And leaving out of Montgomery, Alabama and heading north, the first show, or one of the first shows, was slated for Charleston, West Virginia. But knowing that you're headed towards the north in January, the weather wasn't on their side either. So they knew that they were not going to make the show in Charleston and had called ahead to cancel the show. However, they decided to trudge forward to not miss the Canton show. Finally, they made their way into Oak Hill, West Virginia before they pulled off. And that's when it was tragically discovered that Hank had suffered a massive heart attack and passed away in the back seat of his Cadillac. And from there, the legend of Hank Williams was born. Now, if you happen to have a concert poster from this show that was supposed to happen on New Year's Day in 1953, consider yourself lucky. Just within the last few weeks, a concert poster from that show sold at auction for a staggering $150,000. And also, not far from here, on the banks of Lake Erie, is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that Hank is a member and inductee of. In fact, he's a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Songwriters Hall of Fame, and the Country Music Hall of Fame. Hank's music has, has inspired thousands and transcended generations more. In fact, his music remains an integral part of American culture and American history. And today, we're going to wind back the clocks, we're going to turn back time, and we're going to head down that lonesome highway and take you to Montgomery, Alabama, to his boyhood home and museum. There are some outstanding artifacts and even more spectacular stories for you today. So keep it right here on this episode of History and Relics. This is where it all began, right here at 127 Rose Street in Georgiana, Alabama, a quaint and humble town which is about 60 miles south of Montgomery and only two miles from I-65 at mile marker 114. Hiram Hank Williams was born in a log cabin on September 17, 1923, near the Mount Olive West Baptist Church in the southwest corner of Butler County. The family moved several times as Hank's father improved his job situation from going from a general lumber mill laborer to becoming an engineer on the log train for W.T. Smith Lumber Company. The family moved once more to a related mill in McWilliams, Alabama, and by this time, Hank was starting first grade. Hank's father had fallen ill and was admitted to a veterans hospital. Hank's mother, Jessie Lilybell, or Lily for short, returned to Georgiana with Hank and sister Irene and stayed in a fourplex apartment until a fire broke out and left the family homeless. 
And that's when Thaddeus B. Rose, owner of the home that we'll be visiting today, stopped Mrs. Williams one day at the local post office and advised her that he could provide lodging to the family at no cost until they got back on their feet. And so they did. And for the next four years, this is where Hank grew up, got his first guitar, and learned the first few chords from a local black street performer named Rufus T. Tot Payne. And now let's step inside. We'll be walking on the same floors throughout the home that Hank did when he was a child. We were also very privileged to have a special guided tour on this trip with curator Tracy Eason. Okay, and this is Thaddeus Rose? Thaddeus Rose, who built the boyhood home that Hank Williams um, was raised in from age six to age 14. He actually built it as a boarding house and after Hank's mother and family had come across hard times, he offered for them to live here if Lily would run the boarding house. Awesome. Was these are articles just collected from the family? From, from his family, yes, okay. on his dad's side. Okay. And this was actually his dad's home, and his dad lived in a town called McWilliams, Alabama. Oh. Okay. So that's his, his um, father's grave. And then his father did remarry. This was Hank's stepmother. Interesting. This is all about Hank Williams. All of his favorite things, his favorite colors, his favorite actresses and actors. His favorite actor was John Wayne, by the way. He was a big cowboy movie fan. And that's why he changed his name from Hiram, which was his given name, um, to Hank. Because he said it sounded much more like a cowboy. Mm -hmm. But... Um, Hmm. Yeah, he, he was a big cowboy fan, big horse fan. He loved horses. He said it, he always said if he hadn't ended up being a musician, he'd have probably been a cowboy. Favorite fruit, fried chicken. Thank you. <laughs> Very cool. That's some neat trivia right there. It was our town back in the day, the L&N uh, ra Railroad, I think I could say that twice, huh? Used to run through town here, and we had three hotels. We had three or four mercantile stores that were much like a Walmart that carried everything. Um, very popular, this was our train depot, and uh, down through the years, L&N pulled out, and as they pulled out, we ended up with just freight trains, and so therefore, when the passengers left, our town died. Wow. Isn't that sad, how that happened? It truly is sad. And I told you Hank's dad got remarried. That's his half-sister that he never was really close to because, you know, like I said, his dad and he were quite kind of estranged. <laughs> And this is just another train that would come through the town here? Um, yes, sir. That is an exact replica of the one his dad used to drive. He was an engineer prior to World War One and getting injured in the war. Wow. This is a letter. It's actually owned by Marty Stewart. It was written to Hank Williams, uh, by Hank Williams to his mother back in 1943. He was 17 years old and had just left the state of Alabama for the first time to start his career. And in that time, um, he had met up with the gentleman that bought them all suits to perform, so he was writing his mom to let her know, you don't have to worry about getting us outfits. And in that letter, you'll hear him mention not only his sister, Irene, but a little girl named Evelyn. Um, I have some photographs in here 
of Evelyn and Hank and the very, very first Drifting Cowboys. If you'd like to walk this way, we can do that. Neat stuff, huh? Yeah. I thank y'all for coming. Uh-huh, thank you. This was the original Drifting Cowboys. This is the little girl, Evelyn, in that letter that I was telling you about. Okay. I have an idea that she really wasn't a member of the Drifting Cowboys. I have a feeling that was probably Hank's first fan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. This is Pee Wee Moultrie that played accordion with Hank forever and ever. Huh. Now, all of these are the Drifting Cowboys in various and a sundry different um, stages of the band. Hank had spina bifida, so a lot of the boys in the band were called away to war. Hank could not go to war because of his back injuries. So you will see that he added people along the way, and as his band and popularity grew, their face also grew. Uh, this is Jet Williams. That is his daughter that was born out of wedlock. Uh, she used to perform also with some of the original Drifting Cowboys. And she is solely responsible for us getting a lot of the nice items. The Grand Ole Opry program is actually autographed by Hank Williams. A lot of our things are donated from people whose uh, mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers actually knew and saw Hank. So a lot of the artifacts and things that you see here are uh, simply donations that people have made sure that, that we get a hold of. That's nice. Now, Hank Sr., when he married Audrey, Audrey had a daughter. His daughter was six years old. That's his stepdaughter. But he took her on and raised her just like she was his. She is also uh, responsible for a lot of the items that we have here in the house. Oh, that's nice. Well, how are you enjoying this so far? Pretty cool, huh? Well, we'll be getting back to Tracy's tour here in just a minute, but I thought it would be a good time to share a story with you about this jute box. As the story's told, Hank walked into a bar and walked up to a jute box wanting to hear some country music. Flipping through the selection, he noticed that none of his songs were available. Well, you can imagine how this upset Hank. So what did he do? Well, he bought a jute box, had it filled with every one of his songs, and had it delivered at the bar. When he went back, he told the owner, now you have some good music to choose from. And now we want to cut away and share with you some photos that we took while listening to some of Tracy's stories. There is some great stuff here.
Okay, we're going to turn things back over to Tracy now and let her share some more of Hank's stories and relics, like this interesting steel guitar created by Pappy Neil McCormick. And I thought Junior Brown played an interesting lap steel and steel guitar that he made. Wait until you hear about this one. So that you didn't have to use pedals in your lap steel. It is each side is keyed to a primary chord progression of country music. So you have the key of C, key of G, key of A. It has a spindle on the end of it. It stood on a stand similar to this and all you had to do was turn it and be huh. in the proper key instead of tuning. Huh. Unfortunately, it was made out of a railroad tie, so it's extremely heavy, did not fly as far as patents and selling. There's only two of them in the United States. Um, the Nashville Music Hall of Fame has one and, and Neil donated the other to us. Now, did he oh, have nice. these made or did he make them himself? No, he made them. Neil made these. Oh, so you have one and then Hall of Fame, uh, the Country Nash Music the Hall country of Fame, music Hall has, of the fame other. has one in Nashville. That he passed away. And that's up in Canton, um, right? He, he was on his way to Canton. He had been, uh, actually visited Neil prior to, to leaving to go to Canton, Ohio. They were very close. And um, so this guitar was one of the guitars at Neil's house in Defuniac Springs. A lot of the artists used to come to Neil. Elvis Presley has played this guitar. Mm -hmm. Hank Senior played the guitar. Um, he, you know, he took a lot of the younger guys up under his wing and kind of helped them out along the way. Wow. It's an amazing piece. that was found in the attic of this house. Really? Now, wow. While we can't have anybody alive tell us that that was Hank's guitar, I do know that there are several pictures of him down through the way holding a Gibson guitar like this and playing a Gibson guitar no like this. No yeah. uh, The glasses are actually some of his glasses. He wore glasses in school for a while. Um, that's just a replica of the blue Cadillac that he was in when he died. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I would like to think that that's one of the guitars that he played around with. Wow, can you imagine? Mm -hmm. And then the light? The show light actually came from Louisiana. The Louisiana Hayride, Hank played on off and on radio shows, somewhat similar to the Grand Ole Opry show. And during Hurricane Katrina, the uh, auditorium took a big hit. Mm -hmm. And so they don they called us and donated that to us in hopes that it would not ever have to go through that again. Mm -hmm. And it still has the glass frame behind that piece of paper that says who donated it to us. It actually still has the glass lens and everything in it. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. That's the glass records there. Isn't it? Is it? Some of them are. Yes, ma'am. Double 78s. 78s, yeah. This is actually one of Hank's suits. Um, oh, you can not tell go. he was very tall and very lanky. Um, that yeah. is one of his hats. The uh, suit was donated to us by this gentleman. And uh, I, I just like it because you can see that he was a very, very tall man. He was mm -hmm. six foot one, but back then six foot one was tall. Right, right. Yeah, people back then were smaller. Hi, Ben. <laughs> yeah. And this, fella, and this fella here on the end was the one that donated it? Yes, sir. The, the gentleman here in this newspaper article. Very nice. Neat stuff, huh? Very nice. Thank you so much. Payment of royalties. For, from Columbia BMI, from MGM Records, in a six-month period of time, from January to June in 1950, Hank Williams, off of these songs, to include I Saw the Light, 
um, made $1,300. Hmm. Now, in 1950, he had a lot more than these songs out, so they carry over. But mm -hmm. It was just amazing to me that it took him six months with these songs to pay off that deal. I mean, that kind of drunk he got. Now, the uh, letterhead is A. Cuff Rose, so is there any connection with no, Roy? Sir. No, no Roy, no uh, uh, connection to Roy well, Acuff. Okay. It is Roy Acuff, yes. Okay. This is the Acuff Rose. Okay. The gentleman that built this house, Thaddeus mm -hmm. Rose, is mm -hmm. in no way related to okay. that at all. But there is a connection to Roy Acuff. Yes. Okay. Yes. Japan and actually invited and had Hank Williams and his band to come as ambassadors to their country. Um, they were chosen to, to somewhat try to repair some of the damage that had been done by World War II. Oh. Okay, this was donated to us by Billy Robinson, who actually was in this group of musicians that performed. They were invited to go overseas on one of the first USO tours and perform in Berlin at the Berlin Auditorium in Germany. This is the letter that they all received um, saying that they had been welcomed into the tour. That's awesome. Then how long would these tours normally normally last? Would they last, you know, a week or maybe two or uh, maybe longer? A couple of weeks. This gentleman right here is 93 years old. He's still alive. This this would be him, Billy Robinson. Oh, let me let me zoom down there and get down here. And um, he oh, is still alive today. He lives in Bremen, Georgia. Yeah. Okay. And then this is Billy over here yes. too. He looks like he's playing a lap steel. That's correct. His mother Lily's room. Okay. Uh, the way the house was built, it was an old dog run, so mm -hmm. the hallway, where the, the wall is in that hallway wasn't there. It was, you know, and the door that we walked in wasn't there. Okay. And so it, they were switched. When you came in the front door, you came down a long hallway, and all of these rooms were off to the side. Okay. Uh, the furnishings, this is Hank's bed. It, none of these furnishings are original to this house because they didn't own this house. They, you know, right. but, but these are things that came out of Hank's um, Nashville homes and such, okay. including these wrought iron banisters and shutters. Mm -hmm. This was Hank Williams' first house. Uh, it was on Franklin Road in Tennessee. Um, he, that house does still exist. I had a gentleman come in from Nashville the other day. He said, boy, I wouldn't have recognized it because they built additions onto it and all sorts of stuff. But when Jet inherited that, she made sure that we got one of those shutters and banisters That's off cool. of the house so that we could have it. Oh, yeah. um, that wall is Hank Sr.'s family, cousins, and he was married to Skippers and McNeils, I mean, uh, related to Skippers and McNeils and such in this area. So that's some of his, that one there is his father. Um, this is his sister, his half-sister, okay, okay that, uh, his father's father. right. And then grandmothers and uncles and, and such like that. There is a, a picture on the wall to the right side of the fireplace. That is Audrey in front of their first Nashville home with their collie leaning against the, the music banisters. The painting is actually a painting of a big house that Hank um, bought at 500 acres of land 
at Tim McGraw and Faith Hill actually own that house now. Hmm. And uh, we can't get anywhere close to it to, really? to get any pictures. If you hmm. drive by the address of that place, you won't see the house. Oh, it yeah. is way, right. way, way, way off the beaten path. Okay, this note was actually found in Hank Williams' coat pocket the day that they found him dead in the back of the Cadillac. As you can see, that is girls' handwriting. It is certainly not Hank's handwriting, but um, one can only assume, we do not know, that that maybe was one of his little love interests or perhaps someone that just came up to him and wanted to write a song. Would you please put this in a song? So we, we really are not sure where that note came from, but it did come out of his shirt po or coat pocket when they found it in the... Well, that's going to conclude our visit and tour of the Hank Williams Sr. Boyhood Home and Museum. However, before we leave out, we want to thank the city of Georgiana, Alabama, and curator Tracy Eason for her time and good old-fashioned down-home hospitality. We'd also like to thank curator Rosa Marie Blackman for her time as well in providing some additional information on the museum. If you're in or around the Montgomery, Alabama area, here's a map that will take you for a ride on I-65 and where you can stop off to see some more highlights that focus on Hank Williams, including another museum that features the baby blue Cadillac that Hank died in, his gravesite, and much, much more. For more information on Hank's boyhood home and museum, to visit and or provide the museum the much needed and always appreciated donations, here's their address, contact information, and web address. You can also find them actively on Facebook under the Hank Williams Festival page. Speaking of festivals, Hank's boyhood home and museum puts on a festival each year around June and hosts many top and local artists who perform on site. This was this year's lineup. Everyone gathers behind the home at a large pavilion that comfortably seats several thousand people. But really, whatever you do, do stop by any time of the year. You are always welcome at Hank Williams Boyhood Home and Museum. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you've enjoyed our program. If you like our content, we ask that you like, share, and subscribe to our channel. It costs nothing but means a lot to us and keeps us growing. You may also leave us a tip if you choose. A link is provided here on your screen as well as in the description area below. And until next time, everyone, this one is history. <laughs>